Today we're going to learn about analytical integration. So, let's say we have a problem like this. Solve the de indefinite integral of 5x cubed plus 4x squared plus x to the negative first power, dx. So, before we get started, let's first go over what analytical integration is. So, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, an integral is the antiderivative of a function. So, and solving an integral into analytically means finding the equation that this, or finding the equation that this would be the derivative of. So, let's take another example. Let's say we have to find the indefinite integral of 5. So, what function would 5 be a derivative of? Well, we know that according to the power rule, if you have 5x, power rule for derivatives, if you have 5x, then the derivative is 5. But if you have 5x plus 3, let's say, the derivative is still 5. So we can say that the indefinite integral, integral from, of 5 is 5x. But then how do we account for plus 3 or plus 2 or plus 1? Well, as you can see, all of these functions would have to differ by a constant to have the same derivative. Because if it differs by something that's not a constant, then you have a derivative because it's multiplied by x to the something power, or something like that. But here we just have a constant, which is plus 3. So whenever we add or subtract a constant, the derivative is 0. So what do we do? Well, we symbolize this for an indefinite integral by saying plus capital C. Now, if you had a definite integral, then you could just leave that c out because, let's say this was from point A to point B, and so then you would have this integral, or this answer, which would be the antiderivative, and you would plug in the value of B, so you'd have 5B plus C minus 5a plus c. So then these two c's would cancel out. And you'd have 5b minus 5a. So we can see that you need to add plus c at the end of an indefinite integral. But if you have a definite integral when you're solving for the actual value or the area under the curve, you don't need to account for the c because the c will get canceled out. So. Let's move on to solving our problem. So we just have to remember that when we're solving analytically, we have to remember the fundamental theorem of calculus, which basically says that the integral is the antiderivative. So we have to solve this integral of 5x cubed plus 4x squared plus x to the negative first power dx. And this is an indefinite integral. So let's start with the first term here, 5x cubed. So, we know that for this to be the derivative, the original term had to have x to the fourth in it. Because we can see that this is an exponent, x to the third. And according to the power rule, you subtract 1 from the exponent. So this has to be 4. Now, if this original exponent was 4, then the coefficient was multiplied by 4. But here we only have 5, and we know that 5 is not divisible by 4. So we could either put the coefficient as 5 fourths or find the decimal. We're going to leave it as 5 fourths because it's easier to deal with fractions in calculus. So 5 fourths x to the fourth, or 5x to the fourth all over 4. Plus Now we see we have that 4x squared. So this original one had to have x cubed in it. And if it had to have x cubed in it, and we know that this coefficient is 4, then it is divisible. And we know that we have to divide by 3 here because 4 is not divisible by 3. So the coefficient, the original coefficient, had to be 4 thirds so that when it was multiplied by 3, we get 4. And, the, and then the last one. So although this might seem that it has x to the negative first power, 
and we have to add 1 to the exponent, we know that when we add 1, we will get x to the 0 power, which would have to be 1. Or when x is equal to 0, it would have to be equal to 0. But there's a problem here. That would be a constant. So what do we do? So x to the negative first power is a little different. We remember that the natural log of x has a derivative equal to 1 over x. And we know that 1 over x is equal to x to the negative first power. So that means that this third term here would have to be the natural log of x. And then, now we have to not forget to put the c after, plus c. So, based on these three terms and what we, how we figured out how to do this, we can generalize a power rule. So we can say that when x to the, so let's say we have a x to the n power, when n is not equal to is not equal to negative 1, then the antiderivative of a times x to the n is equal to a x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And notice that if a is divisible by n plus 1, then you will get a coefficient here plus c, the constant that it differs by. And if n is equal to negative 1, then the integral, the indefinite integral of a times x to the n is equal to, and here n would be equal to negative 1, would be equal to 1, or ln of x, so a times ln of x plus c. So here's a power rule that we can generalize for integrals. Today we learned about analytical integration in calculus.